with the wonderful Helen Walker. And those of you that know me know this is flipping early for me. I got out of bed. She said she had a slot now. And I got <laughs> out of bed. That's how much I wanted to speak to Helen this morning. So oh, excuse, thank you. <laughs> excuse, as you always have to, excuse the fact that I don't know why I'm saying it's, it's early and that's why I haven't brushed my hair, but I never brush my hair. So anyway, Helen and I were just chewing the fat over actually showing up like this and how it's just so much, it takes so much pressure off of us, doesn't it? Exactly. Well, I, I'm going swimming. That's why I was like, I can do now before I take Henry swimming at like 10 o'clock. But we were talking about, you know, I was like, I've not got a chance to do my hair. And I was like, I'm, I'm coming on. I'm coming on. Don't matter. Yeah, we're just going to do it. We're just going to do it. Uh, this is what you get when you work with us anyway, isn't it? So we don't want to fake it. We don't exactly. Wanna... Who's that? <laughs> Who's that with all that fancy hair and makeup? <laughs> so um, I met Helen, must have been earlier this year, through our mutual friend Helen Tudor. Yeah. Yeah. Met, um, uh, met her, her house, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. And what instantly grabbed me about Helen was her passion for selling, which even as the money alchemist, and I absolutely love manifesting money, selling still makes me crawl a bit inside. And I'm definitely improving with that because selling is serving and, you know, I'm really leaning into that. But honestly, over the last, well, since I met Helen, I have watched her videos, her LinkedIn posts, her Facebook posts, and she just makes selling so fun. You genuinely love selling, don't you, Helen? I do, I do. Do you know, what? my dad's here this weekend and my dad's worked in sales for, oh my gosh, like 40 years or something. And we always we always talk about like selling, how people overcomplicate it and stuff. And I'm like, I just have this buzz around selling. I'm, I'm, I'm this weirdo that just loves selling. And I just my whole life like anything I do I'm like how can I make this easier like mm -hmm. how can I make this more simple and that's what I've just done with selling is like it's just having a chat that yeah. is it that is all it is but as humans we do like to overcomplicate things don't we <laughs> as soon as we put a label on it so a job interview a first date a sales call we go oh my god because we just put so much pressure on ourselves and then all these stories come about We've got to get it right and we've got to say got to say yes and the cat say no and I'm like nah forget all that it's just a conversation absolutely and like the reason I wanted to do this live with you is because I know that my audience struggle not all of them but most of them like me struggle with the idea of selling and it comes down to those stories and beliefs that um we're not good enough or yeah. we can't question because it might be taken away and we have so many block stories, patterns and beliefs that actually feed into our ability to sell and prevent our ability to manifest money. Yeah. Selling is the easiest way to manifest money. And, you know, Helen says it, I say it, like, if you need more money, go and sell something. Yeah. Go and sell something. Like, whether that's on eBay or Vinted or in your business, go and sell something. But if we've got a problem with selling we're literally cutting off that ability to manifest money. Yeah. And I'm pretty certain everyone in my audience would like to manifest money. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. So what is it that you love the most about selling? I just, for me, it's, I get such a buzz when somebody comes to work with me and they're, they're, they're terrified of selling and then we, we work on their mindset. People are surprised that there's like two modules in my program about mindset mm. when, it's, when it's about selling. And they go, mindset? I'm like, do, do those modules. They're the first modules we do. And then they go, oh my God, that unbelievable. And the thing I like about selling is that there is no better feeling than when my clients get to the end of my program and they walk away and they go, I'm creating a business. I'm creating my own money. I am you know money is not going to make you happy but it sure does make things easier yeah. and you know I'm very happy when my cleaner comes on a Thursday and my house is clean yeah like that's nice you know yeah. and there is no better feeling for me when somebody goes Helen you've changed my life yeah. that is an incredible buzz and that's what I like about selling because if I don't sell you don't get that buzz mm. you know selling is is you know, it's not a selfish thing, but but me helping people 
is is so rewarding yeah. but and the you know the thing I like about teaching how to sell is that it's almost like people's you can see it in their eyes like light bulb moments of oh I didn't know it was this easy that's all I've got to do like mm -hmm. I don't have to do these fancy things or you know there's this secret formula out there I'm like no you just show up and you just tell people um what it is you do and you know share you your stories your personality that's all selling mm. people think selling is when you're on a sales call I'm like no that's that's a tick box exercise to see yeah. if, you know should we do this but selling is just you showing up and it's fun it mm. can be fun yeah I mean and um, you, you know I do challenges and you're going to do a challenge next week aren't you and I cannot wait honestly as much as the challenge is a lot of energy I love challenge week I love it because it is fun and the sales come like that's a, an amazing thing like you're absolutely right sales can be fun yes. there's nothing I enjoy more than doing the challenge and it you know it always results in sales and it always just feels fun and easy and you know really just an enjoyable way to tell people about what I do yeah get them to try it out and then hopefully join well, that's that's what next week's all about you know some some people won't be in a position to to work with me that's absolutely fine they're going to get loads of value from the challenge but it's just an opportunity um for people like you say to come and see what i'm like because people buy you before they buy your programs yeah so i'm not for everybody um but you know it's a chance to for a whole week to get to get some real value to get some wins um to prove to yourself that actually I can do this. Yeah. this is, with the right processes, with the right strategies, the right support, I can do this. I can grow my business. And you're right. You know, some people will buy, some people won't buy. It's completely up to them. Um, but the next week is going to be, you know, people get stressed. Like, oh, God, it's, it's challenge week. I'm like, I am like, bring it on. I cannot wait. Um, you know, I've cancelled everything else. It's mm. just about the challenge next week. Um, it feels like a holiday. It feels like a week off work. Yeah, I'm just going yeah. yeah, to enjoy it. I, I I love helping people. You know, I just get such a buzz from it. And I know next week is is going to fill my tank. You know, it's yeah. definitely going to fill other people's tanks because I'm going to give them all this this help. But I am at the end of that next week. I am going to be buzzing because yeah. it's it. And that is selling. That is, and I'm, that's exactly what I'm teaching people next week is how to show up how to, you know, share your own stories so that people relate to you, they like you, they want to work with you, um, and how then you kind of go, well, this is the next step. If you, if you want to work with me, here it is. And that's as simple as it, 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 as complicated as it needs to be. This is what it's like. Come and see what it's like. If you want to take that next step and get that additional support and that extra support and da-da-da, here it is. This is how much it costs. This is where you sign up. And this yeah. is how long you, you, that offer lasts for. And, and I know from knowing you, I know we don't know each other a lot, but from what I do know of you, like they're going to get huge value just by being in that room, that challenge room with you. I'm signed up and I'm looking forward to it because I, I love learning. I have a lot of resistance to I, literally that selling in the challenges. That was a bit of an epiphany for me because I do enjoy that. So that kind of proves what you're saying about loving selling. And so I'm going to be in there doing this learning from you and just like really enjoying being in your energy because you are you know you are a really powerful force your message is just so like it's solid but also fun and you know very authentically you and I love that I love that so um we're gonna pop the link lovelies I think there's a problem with the live from what Gina's saying but that's fine I'll send an email out so everyone can Everyone can come and watch it anyway. Um, the um, we'll pop the link so that you can people can actually join Helen's challenge. So come and join. Absolutely. And if some of you join Susan's. Um, come and join Helen's as well because you are going to get so much value from this. You are going to you. It's going to transform you. Andy can see us. That's good. That's ah, good. Got it's because we're in all sorts of different places. Oh right. Sometimes it drops off and sometimes it doesn't. So. Um, what would you say, Helen, your number one tip for loving selling would be? Oh, number one tip. Um, number one tip for selling is... 
For loving selling. <laughs> for loving selling is not worry about the outcome. So don't worry if somebody says no, because that's normal. Um, and actually, I've had loads of people who have come to my challenges, who I've had sales calls with, and they've said, no, I don't want to sign up. Mm. Fine? Absolutely. Three months later, they'll come and say, I want to sign up. Yeah. So a no is not necessarily a no forever. It's a no for now. Some yeah. people, it will be a no forever, and that's absolutely fine. But to love selling, what we need to focus on is the people who we can help mm. and not worry about the no's. You will get more no's than you get yeses, especially when you first start out. That's normal. And if you don't take it personally, because people say no for a million and one reasons, and a lot of those are nothing to do with you. Some yeah. people don't believe in themselves. They have issues around spending money and mm. investing in themselves. They don't think they're going to get results. It's got nothing to do with you. So, mm. you know, don't take it personal. You know, it feels personal, but it's not. Mm. Um, and focus on just helping people. And think if think about the next person. You know, if I can help one person, right, the next person, the next person, rather than thinking, I've got to get 25 people to say yes today. Yeah. That's too much of a pressure. It's too much true, too much stress. I I switched that on its head many years ago. And I, I I think I can't remember if I read it somewhere. It was called Go for No. And basically my goal was to get a hundred no's. You it's impossible because you unhook from the outcome. Yeah. It becomes light and breezy. And then every time someone says yes, you go back to zero and you have to start again. And by making it like this opposite game, it took so much pressure. I didn't get that awful embarrassed redness coming up my chest. Yes. Because I was like, I'm detached. I'm going for a no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It seemed so counterintuitive at the time, but it did make it much more playful and it helped me take it far less personally. Um, because, you know, I'm a sensitive soul. I do take things personally. We so I, just, I switched it. And, and you're right, it is the mindset of selling is, is the most important. It's the mindset of everything is the most important. Oh, yeah. And we have to remember as well that we are hardwired to avoid rejection because, mm -hmm. you know, if you were, if when time began, if you were rejected from your tribe, you, you were dead. You, yeah. you, there was no one to help hunt or build camp or mm -hmm. reproduce. So you, you died out. Yeah. Um, that's still in us. That That is still in us. So when somebody says no to us, our mind thinks, oh my God, we're going to die, which is why it feels so incredibly painful. But I think just knowing that allows you to take the power back. So if someone says no to you and you get that, oh my God, they've said no, hmm. just to remember, actually, this is, this is nothing. This is just old DNA. This is old wiring that yeah. we don't really need to that extent anymore, just going off. So you can kind of go, it's just, it's just a noise. It's like an annoying car alarm that's yeah. going off that you just go, I can hear it, but I, I'm not going to go and investigate because I know it's just a car alarm that keeps going off. That's what that rejection is. So we go, okay, we'll just, let's go find somebody who says yes. Mm. Do you find that women have more challenges with selling than men? Oh, completely. Mm. Completely. You know, again, I talked to my dad about this and it, you know, a lot of the hang-ups that I'll talk about that women have and, and hang ups that I had, you mm. know, um, he'll said, I, but I don't get it. I don't understand mm. why, you know, like a no, I don't understand why that would bother you. You just go and find somebody else. I'm like, yeah, but women just take it more personal. Mm. So hundred percent. And that puts us at a disadvantage, doesn't it? I think that fear of getting rejected can actually stop people making their first sale. Oh yeah. And then, maybe they make their first sale but the next couple of people say no and that reinforces the fact it was just luck even though yeah. it our own luck and so we stop and we stop our business we maybe go back to work but we generally just feel pretty shy about ourselves yeah and um that's why you know this is what I think everyone is going to get so much out of your challenge next week that that awareness of of you and how you do things and that it's okay like when I think about it you know I've got I've got a thousand people in my challenge group and 99 97% of them say no to me 97% yeah. <laughs> of them say no to me and and that's that's normal yeah that's normal and so I we have we do have to get we do have to realize that it's like you said it's not us it's not yeah. us 
It's not us. It's not us. Well, you know, I think once you arm yourself with the facts, like you say, you know, what, 2 3%, 5% if you're lucky, of your audience will buy, you know, that's that's quite normal. So well, if, Denise, you, Denise, if you remember that. Yeah, exactly. I remember reading Denise Duffield Thomas's book, Chillpreneur, and she says 1%. Yeah. When I read that, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going for like 100%. Yes. Like, no wonder I feel like a failure. If Denise Duffield Thomas is getting 1%, exactly. like consistently. Exactly. <laughs> I exactly. need to let myself off the hook. Yeah. Yeah. But most people... Most people won't buy is, is, is the honest thing. They'll just take your free stuff. Fine. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, I always say as well, people who don't buy, a lot of them are your business cheerleaders. So mm-hmm. you know, when I've been promoting the boot camp, loads of people who have said, look, I'm not your ideal client, but I want to, they've shared it on their Facebook profile or they've shared it in their group. So they're like your cheerleaders yeah. who are working just as hard for you as a, as a paid client. Yeah. They're just doing it off their own back. But that's because you've built this relationship, you've built this rapport with them, you know, and that's just through showing up. That's and just through selling it to you. It's like you've got your own yes. identity. <laughs> and the other thing that happens is, you know, people come into your world and they may not be able to invest. But, you know, I've got a client that was in, she's been in my world since the start and she used all the free stuff that I do to manifest enough money to join my circle. Yeah. And then she manifested enough money to upgrade into the academy and she literally jumps on calls with me to say, what can I buy from you this month? Yeah. Like she wants, and I'm like, I haven't got anything new. <laughs> like, that's me. I need to sell more. But do you know what I mean? Like, so I, I have those as well. These wonderful, wonderful clients. They're not clients, but they, they love what I do. And they share what I do with such love. They do yeah. my promotion for me. And then I've got the ones that also do the work and end up literally trying to force money into my hand. Yeah. <laughs> it's worked for them exactly. um, some sales happen really fast don't they sometimes you get people that come into your world and they buy everything you do in yeah. like the first day other times people want to build that relationship and that trust with you over time yeah and everything in between yeah exactly um, exactly you know I, I have people who will just find me on instagram and then ring me up we'll have a sales call and they'll book in like yeah. that you know i had one lady who, who watched a couple of my videos and and we had a, a call for about 40 minutes. She signed up and spent 5K and paid in full. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, she's an exception. Mm. Most people will show up in my DMs, Helen, I've been following you for three years. Yeah, yeah. Three years. Yeah. We've never, never seen them before, right? Yeah, they've never liked a post. They've yeah. never said hello. No, nothing. Yeah. I always say as well, depending on what you do, like a lot of the people I help are coaches or um, therapists. So what you're asking them to do, or career coaches, things like that, you're asking them to go, um, yes, I'm struggling. I want a new job. I hate my job. Yeah. I'm it's stressed. Perfect. I'm anxious. Yeah. People are not going to do that on no. the internet. They're going to go, God, yes, this is me. But they're going to keep it to themselves. Mm-hmm. So this is why I don't worry about engagement and how many likes I get and viral videos because it, it means nothing to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want more people to see my stuff, but I want the right people to see my stuff. So if they're yeah. quietly thinking for two years, oh, God, I need to do something, I need to do something, and then something just clicks, fine. That's yeah. how long it takes. It takes yeah. two years. But I've got to make sure I'm consistent for those two years. Exactly. And that can be hard as well, can't it, on your self-esteem? Like when you say, when you post and you don't get any response, that can feel really, really hard. And I always say that to people as well, like, just because you're not getting any interaction, any comments or any likes, doesn't mean people aren't watching. They are watching. Like you, I get messages like, I've been following you for about two years. And I want to let you know that, you know, for example, I got one the other day. These magic checks work. I've seen you talking about them for years and I've done one and they were, and it worked. Like, yeah. Yeah, I know. Come, you know, come, come and do the training again, you know, that type of thing. And that builds their confidence because you have that consistency. You're always there. You're giving good value. And then when they are ready, yeah, do it next week, next month, next year, they, they jump in, don't they? Yeah. And people, people have different journeys to trust, don't they? Oh, totally. A hundred percent. And, you know, you, you have got to be consistent and keep banging the same tune and saying the same thing. Like, I have a podcast and every week on that podcast, I'll say, come and find me on Instagram 
this is way how you'll find me search for this da, da, da. um i went to speak at an event last week and this lovely lady ran up to me and she gave me a hug she was like hello i've been listening to your podcast she said it, 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 it i never i didn't know who she was she said the reason i'm here at this event is because i knew you were coming oh um, every time i have a wobble or imposter syndrome i listen to your podcast and it just gives me that boost mm. and at the end of it we were talking and she said, i didn't know you were on social media <laughs> I'm literally there every day. I say it every day. But of course, she's probably listening to that podcast when she's doing the dishwasher, mm. sorting the kids out. So she's probably only half listening, mm. um, but she's getting what she needs from it. But this is why you need to keep saying, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Instagram, come, yeah. and, find me, come and find me. And then now she'll, she said, oh, I'll, I'll come and find you on Instagram. But it took all of that listening, meeting me in person to go, go and follow me on Instagram. Yeah, and do you know what? You'll get people saying to you, oh, I didn't know you were doing a challenge, even oh, though you a million times a day. I've spoken about it till I'm blue in the face for two <laughs> weeks. But you know, well, you're right, there'll still be people. Mm, they um, haven't seen it. They who've haven't not seen it. it. Yeah. So you it's... have to keep talking about it day in, day out. Yeah. And I can't remember who I heard say this, but someone was like, you, you'll, get bored of, you'll get bored of saying it way before your audience do. And that's a really key point in selling, isn't it? We have to keep repeating our message to keep top of mind for people yeah. and top of the algorithm and all this yeah. sort of stuff. Um, yeah. So I always say as well, if you watch a TV programme where you actually watch the adverts, there'll be a brand that you reckon, I know, baked beans, whatever. Advert break number one, be baked beans. Advert number two is the same adverts again. If, if, if they have to, you know, if Heinz have to do multiple adverts for a product that's been around for how many years, then little old me, who, you know, is in my kitchen in Surrey, I have to, I have to bang that drum. I have to keep telling yeah. people because when I go to the supermarket, I think beans, who do I think of? Yeah. Yeah. I think of Heinz because they keep telling me about their products. Yeah. They keep, keep, it's there in the top of my mind. I'm sure there's other beans available um, <laughs> but I have to really think about them and that's what we want is just to be top of mind yeah. so that when people think I need x whatever you help them with they think of you and they come and check out your your profile but the the way that you do that is by telling stories and by sharing who you are and you know being vulnerable which is hard but I think you do that exceptionally Helen I mean if you haven't followed Helen on I don't think I follow you on Instagram I'm just breaking into Instagram but I follow you on LinkedIn and here and your reels that you do are absolutely incredible they're so vulnerable and funny at the same time and and like they must take so much work and they're just it's like oh gosh I can see me in that <laughs> I, think everyone can. I think that's the thing like everyone goes oh yeah I'll do a bit of that so if you haven't followed Helen and you, even if you just want to be cheered up on a day, <laughs> you go and follow Helen. Like, it's just brilliant. Oh, just thank brilliant. you. Do you know, that, that's why I did the, the, every reel that I do. Um, yeah, it's the idea is to get people to go, oh, God, that's me. So they can see themselves in the, in the videos. But every reel I do, it's me. It's things oh. I've struggled with. It's things I've not coped with or imposter syndrome or questions I've asked myself because I want people to go, it's normal to feel like this. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I teach about sales and mindset and imposter syndrome. I get imposter syndrome every, all the time. Mm. All mm. the time. Before I launched my challenge, I was like, oh God, what if no one signs up? What if it's rubbish? What if nobody likes it? Mm. It's normal. It's just that... I know how to deal with it now so that it doesn't derail me and I don't go, oh, God, yeah, let's cancel it. That's such an important point. I'm in um, Phil Harrison's um, group. He talks about challenges. And uh, he did a training, a live training yesterday, and he is exceptionally experienced and, you know, has done very, very well and is doing very, very well. And he said he still gets imposter syndrome. Yeah. He still doubts whether or not he should do this is he the person and I loved that I was like oh my god thank you so much for saying that because I think that stops us taking action and I see it with my one-to-one -one clients that that fear 
stops us from taking action. It stops us from doing the things that creates money, that brings sales to us. Yeah. And actually, we never get over imposter syndrome completely. No. And I think that shows yeah. that we care. Yeah, it does. And the thing about yeah. imposter syndrome is you don't get it unless you've actually achieved something. Yeah. Right. You know, that's, the, that's the ironic thing about it. Um, but everybody, everybody gets imposter syndrome. Dow is is our is nature's way of making us just pause and go, is this the right path? Because imagine mm-hmm. if you were out on a walk and there was two paths, you didn't have a map, and you just went hurtling along 100 miles an hour down one path, and then you didn't think about it till you got to the end and went, well, this is the wrong path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Imposter syndrome and Dow is just, it, all it is is nature's way of, of going, can you just stop? And ask yourself, is which path? No, yeah. you may be on the right path. So you may go, no, no, this is the right path. Great. Actually, no, this is the right path. I've realized, yes, it's this way. That's all self-doubt is. And when we learn to think of it like that, it's, it's easy to cope with. Yeah, but we stop at the stop when we have imposter syndrome. We go, oh, oh, I need to just stop rather than stop and go again. We just go, oh, exactly. oh let's not do that. We, we interpret it wrong. We think yeah. it's all right. Yeah, well, I'm rubbish. No, it's not. It's like that car alarm again. It's just going off of going, right, is your car getting nicked or is, is it just a gust of wind? Hmm. Oh, it's just a gust of wind. We can turn it off. Yeah. Or, gosh, I'd better call the police. Or it's, it's just... not even mine. Like a lot yes, of times, yes. the stories aren't even ours. They're someone else's. Exactly. Most of what's in here is not ours. No, it's our it's parents, ours. it's our friends, it's society, yes. it's the media. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. It's not even our car. <laughs> no, it's not even our car. And we are worrying about somebody else's alarm. Do you know, that is the best analogy ever. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm just so excited to see your challenge. I cannot wait. Um, and thank you, Helen, so much for... I'd love chatting to you. We should definitely do this more often. <laughs> well, we've got the podcast coming up soon. Oh! Yeah, we have. That's next week, I think, isn't yes, it? Like that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I don't know why it's taken us so long. To have I know. Break. I know. Why? But we got there. We, we got did. there. All in divine timing, as my, as exactly. my group would say. Right time. Yeah, yeah. So um, we have got a link, haven't we? Yes. And we're going to yes. post that. It's quite a long link, so we won't say it. <laughs> no, it's. I need to work on that. Yeah, no, That's it's a long right. link. Just click it. Just click it. Yeah. I'm going to send out an email to everyone so they've got the link as well so they can oh, join join the challenge. Um, but yeah, it's been wonderful chatting to you, Helen. Thank you so much for bringing your energy and the sparkle, putting the sparkle into sales. I feel yeah. like fired up. I want to go and sell something now. Good. Everybody just go and talk about your thing today. Just yeah. you, know, you never know. You never know. You know, that is exactly it. You never know. And that could be the post that gets you a sale or it could be the post that plants a seed that gets you a sale in a few weeks' time. Exactly. And I always say to people, you know, go on at the weekend and do a video, talk about your offer, even if you walk in the dog or with the kids, because everybody's at home scrolling on Facebook. So just do a quick 10 minute video. That's all it's going to take and go, if you want to, if you want this thing, this is how you buy it. Yeah. And you don't have to, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be scripted. You don't have to have your hair and makeup done. Like you do not have to be perfect. Exactly. Just show up. And exactly do you right yeah because that's the easiest thing to do yeah well yeah. it's the only thing I can do you know I've got two two boys who run me ragged <laughs> I cannot do the blow dries and all the fancy makeup I ain't got time <laughs> even if you did is that what you'd do with it I know some people like that sort of thing I'm not that fast <laughs> I'm not very good with makeup so I put it on anyway and it looks like you know when you've been borrowing your mum's makeup when you're like five <laughs> I'm like I just should leave it natural <laughs> exactly i know exactly what you mean right my lovely let's say goodbye to everyone and thank thank you you so much and wishing you enormous abundance with your challenge oh thank you very much thank you thank you for inviting me in see you later everyone